<sighs> All right, so now that that's over. You are Locked On Yankees, your daily New York Yankees podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Yankees, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making us your first listen every day. I'm Stacey Gonsoulias. This episode is brought to you by Game Time. Create an account in the Game Time app and use code Locked On MLB for $20 off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. With me as always is my producer, Steve Granado. Steve, what's going on? Happy off season, Stacy. It's official. It's over. Season over. That's it. Goodbye. Wrap it up. We're cleaning out the clubhouse. That's a wrap. Uh, hey, thanks for clicking on the first episode of the 2023-2024 off season. Appreciate that you're here. Uh, coming up on today's show, it's not an official Miners Monday, but there were some awards at the end of the season for Double A players, and we also wanted to preview what could be won in the AAA ranks. So some awards that came out here recently. We'll talk about that later on in the show. Of course, there's still baseball to talk about. Carlos Rodon had an eventful last game. We need to dive deep into that and ultimately come away with an answer of, do we care? That's coming up later. Stacy, Yankees finished the season with a big old fat loss of a series in Kansas City, final score on Sunday, five to two. They finished the year eighty-two and eighty. Thoughts? Thoughts on that record? <laughs> eighty-two and eighty. Ooh, worst one since nineteen ninety-two, I believe. So it's been a really long time since the Yankees have had a win total that small. Um, uh, twenty fourteen and twenty sixteen, I think they lost lost one eighty-four games. So they were close, but yeah, this is oh wow, yeah. I mean. Considering three weeks ago or four weeks ago, people were wondering if they were even going to finish above 500, you know, so they did and they kept that streak going to 31 seasons of um, winning baseball for the Yankees, the longest current streak and the next closest is LA Dodgers 13 straight winning seasons for them. But yeah, um, I mean, you know, <laughs> and the series was just like a womp womp. You lose oh, two out of three way. to the Royals. Wah, wah. <laughs> yeah. And like some of the game, like some of the players, just like that, like Michael King on Sunday was not Michael King that we've gotten used to. And you're just like, no. well, you know, giving up three bombs in four innings. You're like, oh, great. Sick. Dope. One strikeout, eight <laughs> hits. Cool. That's a great way to go out. Uh, no, I mean, look, we, we love Michael King and we've, yeah. we've been singing his praises for weeks, whatever. Yeah. He's allowed to have a dud. Uh, yeah. If this has had happened, like, Four starts ago, we would not even be thinking about it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just that it happened to be the last game of the year. It was a little too on the nose. Hey, but Johnny Brito got out of the Johnny Brito-esque line. Chuck got six over three. Yeah, that was a very good performance by him. Um, yeah, I, I was bummed about King, but also it's like, all right, it's just the way this, this season is going and the way the series is going, and it's fine. And like you said, he, it's okay. It was like his first dud of his yeah. starting career so he's okay but yeah good for brito i mean yeah i know it's the royals but six strikeouts in three innings is pretty damn good you mentioned the word bummer or bummed you know what i was bummed about that the last day of the season didn't matter this year i yeah. i really like the last day of the year when it's i'm reading all the dumb you know scenarios, oh, scenarios. and the tie yeah the tie stuff and yeah this year was such a dud at the end of the season everything got wrapped up on saturday so i was just like oh, well that's not fun i know i really wanted like chaos in the al west and i wanted the mariners to do something because i wanted the blue jays to not know if they were going to make the playoffs right away and i wanted something and then we just got a big fat nothing, nothing. and it was I wanted the I wanted the marlins to have to go to back new york man i wanted that <laughs> i wanted them to have to play four outs Oh, no. See, I didn't want that. I didn't want I that. Thought that would have been so funny. That would have been hilarious no, if they had to go I back don't. and play four outs. Just just from like a baseball inside Crazy. insider perspective, like, yeah, like, do the Mets sell tickets? Do, do they have concessions? Are the bathrooms open? How much is parking? Like, I just want to know oh, what yeah. would happen that day. <laughs> OK, that's true, because I mean, technically, like, do, it was do you swing first game. pitch? Who? Yeah. Who's pitching? Like, who do you lay down a bunt? Like, do you care? Like, I just I wanted to know all that stuff. But of course, we'll never know. We'll never yeah. know. Yeah. I mean, good for the Marlins, by the way. That, that's yeah. amazing. Shout out the Marlins. Shout out the mm -hmm. Marlins. Super happy for them and their fan base. Yeah. Um, yeah, IKF with an RBI double drove in two. That was pretty much all she wrote on Sunday. Was it was a pretty <laughs> uneventful five to two loss. Saturday, a little more eventful. 
Uh, Glaber drives in a, a couple of runs. Oswaldo Cabrera, Flo, Pereira, all the young guys getting in the offensive action in a 5-2 victory. Clark Schmidt goes out there one more time, gives us four innings. Uh, final line here for, for Clark Schmidt stays. 155 innings pitched this season. 4.65 ERA, not the greatest, but there were a lot of really good starts and good stretches of baseball in there. Mm-hmm. 23 homers given up, point point to, to work on. 1335 mm-hmm. whip. I'm not mad at that whip, uh, especially when you consider he's supposed to be a four or five. 46 walks, 146 K stays. Yeah. Like <laughs> some good little numbers in here for Clark Schmidt. Just wanted to also state this, Stacy. Mm-hmm. So I said that 155 innings pitch. We've been talking about that the last couple of weeks on the show. But mm-hmm. last season with New York, 55.7 innings pitch, 33 with the Rail Riders. So to go from 90 innings, essentially, to 155, that's not a small jump. And he handled it with pretty decent grace, man. I'm pretty impressed with Clark Schmidt. As we keep joking about, he's he probably already started that nap that he needs on the plane ride. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's... Oh, he's on the plane right as we record this. It's Sunday afternoon, my time, Sunday evening, your time. Uh, oh, he is conked out. He is conked out. Yep. <laughs> like like a kid walking out of Disneyland on his dad's shoulders, you know, like that oh, yeah. kind of tired. You spend all <laughs> day just, in the hot sun. It's just sun. Judge carrying out Clark Schmidt out of the out of Profit <laughs> Stadium on his shoulder. And he's just like, <laughs> done. Oh, uh, yeah. Hey, Frankie Montas pitched. So yeah. by comparison, <laughs> who had on their bingo card that Clark Schmidt would finish with 155 innings and Frankie Montes would finish with 1.1? 1. 1. Just the way we all drew it up. Oh, it just it just further illustrates how strange this season was. <laughs> oh, we have so much to dissect in the offseason here on this That's show. That's the only good thing about the way this <laughs> season went, right? Because we have a lot to dissect oh, yeah. in the off season. So we have a lot of you. like <laughs> locked on therapy sessions to go through. We have a lot mm-hmm. of uh, like, Hey, remember when we made like one segment on this in the middle of August, but now we're like, wait a second. That was really, really weird. We have to talk <laughs> about those things a lot more. So make sure to hit uh-huh. subscribe because there's going to be some interesting conversations this off season. But interestingly enough, of course, Frankie Montes also gets the win on Saturday because who else had that on their bingo card that the last one of the season would belong to Frankie Montes. <laughs> Again, kind of not surprising just with the way things went yeah <laughs> uh maybe at the beginning of the year this wasn't on the bingo card or the loteria card but maybe like halfway through the year it would be uh carlos rodon's final start on friday didn't record a out charged with eight exits with five scored then three and in, uh all inherited score a nine run first it was it was over before i blinked uh, yeah, I couldn't. Yeah. Be- I I mean, I could believe that, but I also couldn't believe that. Still, still shell shocked from that one. Mm-hmm. I mean, let's skip past that for a second because we're going to talk about that here in our second segment. Uh, <laughs> but Austin Wells, ni- nice to see him finish with a three run shot and kind of the power started to surge back here towards the end. Yeah, it's always good to see that. Um, you know, there were some bright spots like in the Saturday game, as you said, Oswaldo, Floreal, Pereira all had. Uh, ribby ribby knocks as you would say and you know wells getting the home run and just seeing the kids do things um because we've been saying that for a couple weeks like just look out for that don't worry about anything else don't get don't freak out if something bad happens but you're allowed to freak out about radon and we're going to talk about that in the next segment but you're you're allowed to be angry about that because it wasn't good (laughs) no it wasn't great wasn't great wasn't great at all uh yeah just what a what a weird Again, just I mean, we said this what on Thursday, on Thursday or Friday show. Where were the Yankees playing the Royals for the final <laughs> series? <laughs> just a weird schedule in general. Um, yeah, just. And as okay, I said on sure. Friday show, yes, I wanted to see something from Carlos Rodon, but that was not it. That was not it. We're going to talk about that in a second. Don't worry. We're going to go in depth here. Have some quotes from Matt Blake, have some quotes from Aaron Boone, and we also have some quotes from Carlos. Um, hey, just as a reminder, just because it's the off season doesn't mean anything's changed on this show. We still have five days a week on Locked On Yankees audio and video, both available. However, you, whatever your jive is, we got it for you. If you want to see our faces, if you don't, you can find us just about anywhere. <laughs> so download 
any app that you listen. I don't know why I said download, whatever. Just listen to Locked on Yankees. You know the drill. It's still going. Five days a week. We will tell you when we will go to three days a week. That is in the far future. We are still five days a week. Think of it this way. Five days a week, winter meetings. Winter meetings. That's pretty much where we've been on Locked On as a as a network recently. We haven't been told officially when we go into three. So I think winter meetings. That's where we're at. So we got mm-hmm. plenty of stuff to talk about. Um, of course, be the first to know everything on subtext. So our subtext is starting to shift over into off-season content as well. So there aren't going to be, obviously, a lot of roster moves or anything like that. But we will be keeping you updated with rumors. Real rumors, not the dumb rumors. Real rumors, real insider info, all the stuff you could want. Um, talk to you about rehab stuff. How are things guys? How are guys treating their rehab stuff? And how are they treating their off-season injuries? Keeping you updated with the fall league and the prospect stuff. That's still going on. So make sure to check out subtext. That's in the episode description. And of course, you always get fan mail Friday priority with that, which also will continue. Season's over. We're not. Okay. We step aside though. We're done for this part. When we come back, Carlos Rodon, let's just dive into this mess. <laughs> Even I think buying tickets shouldn't be stressful. Game time is the fastest and easiest way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and shows near you. Baseball in New York may be over, but the Rangers, Devils, Islanders, all their preseason games are happening. The Nets and the Knicks are on deck. And of course, football is in full swing. Game time takes all the work out of buying tickets. So all you do is tap a few times and you're in. Forget planning months in advance. Game time has deals on tickets right up to the moments before first pitch. First, uh, what's the thing in basketball? You toss the ball up in the air tip off and uh that's it tip off get exclusive flash deals on tickets for other events too like concerts comedy theater and more with their lowest price guarantee and event cancellation protection game time is the best place to buy tickets in just a matter of seconds snag the tickets without the stress with game time download the game time app create an account and use code locked on mlb for 20 dollars off your first purchase terms apply again that's code locked on mlb for 20 dollars off download game time today last minute tickets lowest price guaranteed Back here on Locked On Yankees. Hey, everydayers out there, you guys already know that we're still five days a week here on this show. Coming up on tomorrow's show, it's the first October without playoffs in a while. So we got to talk about that. Also, for the everydayers, we're going to be talking playoff baseball still, just because the Yankees aren't in it. Every third segment, once the playoffs start, i.e. on Tuesday and then once Wednesday show, we will be talking playoffs. We will be talking playoffs. So. For the real baseball fans out there, not just the Yankees fans, we still got playoff content for you guys. So don't worry. That's going to be coming up on every show moving forward. And then, of course, tomorrow we got to talk about how weird it is. It's just just a weird to address the elephant in the room. Uh, speaking of addressing the elephant in the room, maybe maybe like the loudest possible elephant known to man. Stacy Carlos Rodon's last start. My God, that was. Would you say it was the worst possible way for him to finish the season? Like, oh, yeah, unless he like, I don't know, grabbed the bat and hit Aaron Judge in the head with it. Like, I, I can't think of <laughs> anything else that could have made that worse. Like, like even even like a, an a, a injury wouldn't have been as bad. I mean, like, oh, he has the whole off season to rehab. Just, no, this yeah. is just like the worst possible way it could have ended. And it wasn't it wasn't just the performance. It was everything that went along with it. If it was just him pitching that badly. Yes, it would have been bad, but it wouldn't have blown up into what it blew up into and what we're going to discuss with all these quotes from people because of what he did <laughs> during that yeah. start. So let's uh, before we get to what he did, Stacy, I, I wanted to get the numbers out there because, you know, yeah. you can't look these up on the Internet. They don't exist. Uh, <laughs> Friday, of course, didn't record an out. Six hits, eight earned charge. He allowed five and then the bullpen allowed in three after that fact. Uh, two walks didn't strike anybody out. Uh, season total 64 and a third innings of work. That's a, like a, not even reliever status, 15 homers Stace. 15 homers. That's the second most in his career allowed in a single season, 15 homers finishes with a 6.85 ERA, maybe the worst freshman season that we could have ever imagined in a Yankees uniform. Like, I think this might take the cake just overall, not even factoring in Friday stuff, just overall, like those numbers and what we saw as a whole and all the drama surrounding it. Again, I think, I don't think this season could have gone much worse for Carlos Rodon. No, the only person who's similar basically 
in relation to the contract he signed and the injury issues and the not getting off to a good start, not even doing anything, is Carl Pavon Carl Pavano. That's the closest thing I can think of in recent years to Carlos Rodon. Just <laughs> a complete disaster. Just complete you, disaster. Uh, total disaster. Total disaster. And like okay, let's get into let's get into the Friday. Let's just get into Friday. So mm -hmm. we're gonna we're gonna ultimately decide here whether we care or not about how this all went down. But in case you you know live under a rock and you didn't see how this all shook out, <laughs> uh, Matt Blake comes out to visit Rodone in the first inning because that's the only time he pitched. Comes out to to visit him, to talk to him, talk some sense to him, try and calm him down. He kind of turned his back to him a little bit. He kind of pointed, I, I'm talking about Carlos now, pointed yes. to, you know, kind of pointed to the dugout a little bit. Like it wasn't, it wasn't a great look. Um. Here's what Matt Blake had to say about it to the media. Like he didn't have media availability after for a reason, <laughs> uh, but he, this is what he said uh, after the game quote, it's part of what makes him really good at times. And it's part of what can undo him in certain situations. So it's just a fine line that these guys have to toe when they go out there and compete at the highest level. It's something we're constantly working on as a group and him in particular, we want him to go out there and have a lot of success and behave in the right ways. Obviously, this is one we'd look back and wish we could have back. That was Matt Blake, pitchy coach for the Yankees. This is what Aaron Boone had to say, quote, what happened is not acceptable and something we wanted to make sure we addressed properly, but we feel like we're in a good spot and there's no ill intentions there on Carlos's part. So there was a closed door meeting, Stacy, after this whole thing blew up between Aaron Boone and Carlos Rodon, which I don't know how heated that got or what was said in that meeting. Obviously, you know, Aaron Boone said that, you know, we, we feel like in a good spot. I, I kind of tend to agree. It didn't seem like Rodone was doing it towards Matt Blake in general, like towards him particularly, like it's your fault. I think he right. was mad at the situation that he had gotten yeah. himself into. Um, but your thoughts on this plus the comments, we're going to get to what Rodone said as well, but the comments coming from the coaching staff. Like you said, I know he wasn't, it wasn't like he was purposely being spiteful toward Matt Blake, but and I don't like the whole you have to play the right way thing, but there is a way to behave in a baseball game. And that was not it on Friday night. I know you're frustrated and I know that the season isn't going the way you want it to go, but that was just completely uncalled for. And I don't blame Blake for not speaking after the game because I know he's probably really heated after that. And, uh, you know, um, just you can't do it. You just can't do it. You have to, you have to keep your emotions in check. Um, like it's okay to be fiery on the mound. We see Garrett Cole do it all the time, but you can't do stuff like that to the coaching staff. Like, cause you're showing them up, even if you don't mean to, that's what you're doing and you can't do that. Yeah. It's one thing if it happened in the dugout, but when right. it happened in the middle of the field, in the middle of a game that I think that's what, um, makes it all the worse. And I think what else makes us all the worse, if this had just been a regular old, you know, season for Carlos Rodon, where the numbers are where you expect his career averages to be, probably not even really considering it. You're just going like, well, he's pissed off. Like, right. I mean, even if you go back and rewatch the clip, Michael K was kind of joking about it. Like he, he was just like, oh, he just turned his back to him. Like, ha ha ha. Uh, I mean, I'm not <laughs> saying he like was in the right or the wrong, but like that, right. that's the mentality there. You're like, you're not really thinking like, oh, whoa, dude. Like he just waved him off or he pushed him away or, you know, anything he didn't come physical or anything like that. Yeah. Um, Rodon ended up apologizing uh, to him the next day. And he told the media this quote, really embarrassing and then doing that with matt coming out trying to help me i turned my back i was not in the right mind that's on me so i don't know if i'm getting boy cries wolf here because <laughs> on I, I can go in two directions here stacy on one hand like put your money where your mouth is mm -hmm. and just perform right but on the other hand every time something has happened to carlos rodon this season he has taking responsibility for it. And I, you can appreciate that. He has always gone out, told the media, he's like, nope, I screwed up, that's my fault. I'm gonna be better, I need to be better, I need to be better. So like, yeah. he understands that. It's not like we're having like an Anthony Rendon situation here where no habla ingles and I just don't even care, I'm not even gonna worry about it, I'm just here to collect a paycheck type stuff. He right. is like visibly upset at himself and the way he's performed this season or did perform this season and just all of that like 
again, you can kind of go in both directions, and I think you'd be valid in going both directions, wh whichever one you choose to go. I don't know which way you kind of lean. Yeah, I, I like that he takes responsibility for it after it happens, um, because like you said, there are players who don't do that. They hide from the media, they uh, pretend the media doesn't exist, or they have just answers that you don't want to hear. And he at least takes responsibility for his behavior. Um, and like you said, it would have been different if it happened in the dugout after he was pulled out or like if he reacted in a way after he was pulled out and it happened in the dugout and sure if they caught it on camera i mean that always happens you always see guys get pissy in the dugout and you catch it on camera but the fact that it happened on the mound made it worse just in my eyes just because everyone can see it on the mound but again he did take responsibility and it's just a whole snowball effect of the entire season and just you know he probably thought the same thing we all thought. Okay, this is my last start of the season. I really need to go out there and kind of like end on a positive note. And it was the worst possible outcome. The only thing that would have been worse is if he gave up all eight runs on eight home runs in a row. I mean, it was yeah, really like that's, just... <laughs> and it never would have gotten to that point. Never would have gotten right, to that no, point. Right, no. Yeah, I think after like three or four, they'd be like, okay, we're, we're, come, right, come yeah. out now. Uh, Johnny, get, a, get, a, get your glove. Um, <laughs> Stacy. but it comes ultimately down to this, Stacy. I don't know why I just said your name twice in one sentence. <laughs> <laughs> do we care? Like, does this matter? Like, I, I saw a lot of people on Yankees Reddit, which is, you know, the number one source to get your information that's completely unbiased. But I saw a lot on Yankees Reddit. A lot of people were just like, eh, you know, eh. Maybe not to the level of blowing the kiss in Anaheim thing from Carlos yeah. Rodon, but kind of like, I mean, the only reason we're all pissed at this or that it's been blown up is because of how bad the season is. Yeah. So that's kind of the camp I land in. If yeah. this had happened earlier in the year, I think it would be a bigger deal. But now that he's not going to see Matt Blake for a couple of months, you know, <laughs> it makes it a little easier. You can kind of have an off season and, you know, everyone's just parting their ways. I don't think there's going to be any grudge between them. That's no. how I feel about it. No, I don't think so either. Um, I would like to point out that there was a radio host. I um, can't remember his name. Oh, Sean Marash, who's on WFAN, who was heckling Carlos Rodon after a Rodon after uh, the Anaheim kiss incident. Um, he was standing outside of Yankee Stadium screaming at him. And they reposted the video on Twitter on Saturday as a got you. And he was kind of like, oh, I told you this guy was this bad. And it's like, OK, just <laughs> cool, cool. <laughs> Like, it's and that's that what I said. Serious, I actually said, this is actually embarrassing, dude. Like, yeah. why are you even yeah. doing this? Self-own, bro. Self-own. Like, yeah, he really self-owned himself. I mean, a lot of the New York radio guys do that. But it was just like, why? Like, yeah. like you said, it's just a culmination of a horrible season for the Yankees and for him. And, um, you know, if he were pitching better and had a bad outing like that, it probably wouldn't have it maybe not have happened. Like he would have just been like, oh, whatever. It's just a bad outing, like that kind yeah. of a thing. But because there was so much going into it, that's why it happened the way it did. So yeah, everything will be fine in 2024. They'll be buddy, buddy and arm in arm at spring training. Like nothing happened. It'll be fine. So long as they're both, well, he'll be there. Will Matt Blake be there? We'll be there. A whole new coaching staff. We'll see. I don't think Matt that's Blake a... should be one of the scapegoats here. No, but I mean, Let's not get into that. Let's not get into that. We're not. We're not going to. That's going to be that. a future episode, though. <laughs> That's a future episode. Hit subscribe. We're, we'll we'll talk about the yeah. coaching staff and <laughs> how all that stuff shakes out. Mm -hmm. um, all right, we just step aside one more time. When we come back. Some good news. Let's get to the good side. Some pretty cool stuff happening in the minors over the last couple of days. So let's talk about that when we come back. Back here on Locked On Yankees. This is weird, Stacey. This is normally when I'd say download Sirius XM to listen to the Yankees game, but there is no Yankees game. Feels weird. Feels weird. We got to like get out of our habits now at this point. Uh, but a habit that I never <laughs> want to break is talking about minor league baseball. They haven't played in a while. Rail Riders are done. They were done this week. Everybody didn't play this week. Guys heading out to the Fall League, though. We're going to be covering the Fall League. Not as in-depth as we have the minors, of course, but we're keeping our eye on the guys that are out there. Um, you can check out last week's show to find some information on the minors uh, in case you missed that last Monday show. Stace, the Yankees got a couple extra awards here at the end of the season, and we're still anticipating a couple of more. Uh, because the AAA season just finished over the weekend with Norfolk Tides, by the way, the Baltimore Orioles affiliate winning the AAA national title. Had nine of their top 14 prospects. Uh, okay, so the <laughs> – just ridiculous, just ridiculous. They're good. Number one prospects uh, in baseball. Just, just ridiculous. Best, best farm system. Okay, but 
Got some good news on the Yankees side of things. Jason Dominguez ended up winning top MLB prospect in double A this season. Uh, he was an Eastern League all-star. And Stacey, just considering, let's be real, how bad the season was going first half for Jason Dominguez to come out as the top MLB prospect in the Eastern League tells you absolutely everything you need to know how good those two months were to negate the first couple of months of the year. It's just really, really remarkable the turnaround he had this season. Yeah, and if it wasn't for that turnaround, I mean, they may have kept him down. They may, oh. even with all the stuff that was going on with the Yankees, they probably would have kept him down. So that. Yeah, they, they'd probably go to flow first. Mm -hmm. They probably would have gone to flow first or gone to Franchi instead. I was going to say, not flow, probably Franchi. Yeah, let's not, let's not get carried away here. <laughs> yeah. <don't... laughs> yeah, not too, not, let's not do that. Um, also, Richard Fitz uh, was named a Eastern League All-Star, friend of the show. Uh, he also won Eastern League Pitcher of the Year. Very nice. Which is awesome. Because, look, we talked about the Somerset pitching staff ad nauseum this season. But a guy that we maybe probably didn't give enough love to was Richard Fitz. And, look, this comes with a bit of a caveat, I think, with this award. Because had Will Warren stayed there all season, he would have won it. Had, probably. <laughs> had Clayton Beater stayed there, he would have won it. Like Richard Fitz was like the odd guy out, essentially, of the of the dynamic starting rotation in 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 the Eastern League for the the Patriots. But uh, for Richard Fitz to stay there all year, dominate all year, and finish his season as strong as he did in that uh, Northeast Division Championship game, that game two, you know, six innings of what was it, two runs? Two, um, yep. He was he was phenomenal in that game in the biggest stage uh, with the season on the line. He stepped up in a big wave. So for him to get an All Star nod and Pitcher of the Year is just flat out awesome. I love it. I'm so happy for him. And he's a good guy. He was really accommodating and nice when we had him on the show. And if you guys want to watch that episode, you can look it up because we have it. It happened earlier in the season. He was just really like a good dude. Yeah, I'll put it in the episode description. I'll, I'll toss it in there for you guys. In case you <laughs> ever missed that uh, conversation, we we loved having Richard Fitz on. He was so cool and so kind. And and uh, Stephen Cusimano with the, the Patriots helped set that up. He was great. It was all awesome. Um, Stacy, like I said, we're still waiting on a couple of awards. The AAA awards have yet to come out since it just ended this weekend. It might be coming out today. They don't really announce when they're going to release these awards. But just mm -hmm. given trajectory of how the rest of the stuff usually happens, they usually give out awards on Monday, like the weekly and the monthly stuff. So... Look out for that. Um, I'm, I'm thinking Flo is going to win uh, an all-star nod. I can't imagine that Estevan Florial is not an all-star this season. Uh, I mean, he, he almost had, hit 30 home runs. <laughs> yeah, it was well, it was his best minor league season of his career. It wasn't even close. Like, he he really crushed it. Andre Shaparo might also win. He hit 25 bombs this season. I might see him uh, winning an all-star nod. And maybe a guy that did, we didn't give enough love at all this season because he wasn't a guy that tore the cover off the ball but was super, super, super consistent this year. Jamie Westbrook. Hmm. Jamie Westbrook was a guy that I don't think we brought up on a single Miners Monday segment this year, but I think he might be a dark horse candidate to win uh, an all-star nod this year as well. So I think you might have a couple. I don't know if we're going to get anything on the pitching side. Mitch Spence was pretty much the main guy this season. He gave up a lot of home runs this year. Um, did end up finishing second uh, in Rail Riders history in strikeouts behind Matt Crook's 2022 performance uh, in a single season. So there are... Uh, I think there's not going to be a ton on the pitching front for the rail riders, but flow, I think is a lock. Chaparro is close, but maybe not a lock and Westbrook might have a bit of an outside shot. So pretty cool that, you know, we're, we're going to, we had a pretty good year as far as uh, minor league is concerned. Yeah. And uh, thanks to you. I know uh, way more minor league players than I've ever known in my entire life. Um, I used to pay, <laughs> I paid attention more uh, probably like 20 years ago, you know, around that time. Um, like 2004 or five when like Phil Hughes was coming up, like those guys were in the system. I was supposed to see Hughes at Trenton. It was like, we were all re like my friends and I were really into the minors and like following these guys. And then, you know, there was just so many disappointments that I was like, I'm not paying attention to the minors. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like a lot of Yankee fans feel that way, but I feel like thanks to you, the uh, viewers and listeners to the show now know so much about minors and my like the Miners Monday segment was so great. And um, I feel like a lot of the viewers and listeners know so much more now also that maybe didn't want to, but now are actually anticipating <laughs> the news about the Miners and also thinking the same way. I know that guy. I remember when he was with Somerset, like that kind of thing. Yeah, <laughs> it should be a pretty good year next year. Uh, I'm excited for George Lombard Jr. to see what he does mm. in the full season, his first full year. 
Um, and then, of course, I'm really excited to see how Beater responds to the adversity he had in AAA. Same with Will Warren and seeing what they do next year in AAA because they're going to start there. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited. And thank you for your kind words. I appreciate it. We work, <laughs> we work super hard on that and making sure that everybody gets all the info they need to know. So don't worry. Miners coverage or prospects coverage still continues here in the offseason. We got Fall League. There's still a bunch of guys out at the Fall League that we're going to be uh, keeping up with. And, of course, we still don't know anything about Winter League Baseball. Haven't heard any movement on that front. But as soon as we know if there are any Yankees representatives going out to the uh, Winter Leagues, we will let you know. I'm keeping my eye on that as well. Baseball's year-round, man. There ain't no stopping, especially on Locked on Yankees. So make sure to hit subscribe. Of course, we will also be uh, helping out our subtexters know. 14-day free trial, fan mail Friday priority, all that stuff. Episode description has the uh, information for that. Click on the link down below. And coming up on tomorrow, no October baseball for the Yankees. Feels weird. We got to talk about it. That's coming up tomorrow. And that's going to do it for today's Locked On Yankees, our first of the offseason. I'm Steve Granato. And I'm Stacey Gatsoulias. We'll see you tomorrow.